Hi, this is Josh from Over the Shoulder Coding. And in this series, I'm walking you through HackerRank's 30 Days of Code Challenge day by day. In day 26, we're being challenged with nested logic. Check out day three's video if you aren't familiar with conditional statements. Our task today is to help calculate the return fines for a library. When a book is returned, we will calculate the return cost based on the following structures. If the book is returned on or before the expected return date, no fine will be charged and will print zero. If the book is returned after the expected return date, but still within the same calendar month and year as the expected return date, we will print the fine as 15 by the number of days late. If the book is returned after the expected return month, but still within the same calendar year as the return date, then the fine is 500 by the number of months late. If the book is returned after the calendar year in which it was expected, there is a fixed fine of 10,000. The input format for this question is two lines. The first line contains three space separated integers denoting the respective day, month, and year on which the book was actually returned. The second line contains three space separated integers denoting the respective day, month, and year on which the book was expected to be returned, the due date. All days are going to be between 1 and 31, the months are going to be between 1 and 12, and the years are going to be between 1 and 3000. So a sample input is that the book was returned on the ninth day of the sixth month of 2015. So June 9th, 2015. Um, but it was actually due June 6th, 2015. So it's three days late. And three by 15 is 45. So we're going to print 45. So we have four states we could be in. There's no fine. It is a few days late, it's a few months late, or a few years late. There are also three categories we are checking based on, year, month, and date. We are going to nest our conditional statements since a year contains months and months contain days. We will first check the largest category, then the next largest, and then work our way down to the smallest. So we'll check first if the book is returned in the previous year, the same year, or the later year. If the book was returned in a previous year, then we just print zero because they don't need to pay a fine. If the book is returned in the same year, then we will need to check the month or even down to the day. Otherwise, if the book was returned in a later year, we will just print 10,000. In the case that the book was returned on the same calendar year, we will check the month. So if the month was a previous month, then we don't need to charge a fine and we'll print zero. If the month is the same month, we will have to check a finer category, the date. And if the month was after the due month, then we will print 500 by the number of months late. And if the book was returned in the same year and month, we need to check for the date. So if the book was returned on or before the due date, we do not need to pay a fine. But if it was returned after the due date, we will charge 15 by the number of days late it was. So. First, we need to read in our input strings. So we will capture the input of the first line, strip it of any white space on either end, then split it into the elements for day, month, and year. And we're going to use something called list comprehension. which you can read about in the docs, in the Python docs here, uh, which is a really easy way to create lists or get elements out of a list. So we're going to be getting the elements out of this list uh, using the documents, using list comprehension. So you can follow this link, and I'll also link it in the description below. And we're going to get the return day, return month, and return year from this list. We're also going to do the same for the due day. Then we're going to check the biggest category first.
if the return year is less than the due year, then we don't need to charge a fine. And we'll just print zero. If the return year is the same as the due year, we will need to check month. Otherwise, we will return or print 10,000 because it's over or in the next calendar year. If we need to check the month, then we will do the same thing. If it was returned in the same year, but in an earlier month, we'll print zero. If it was the same month as it was due, we will need to check the day. Otherwise, we will print 500 by the return month minus the due month. And if it's returned in the same year and the same month, then we need to check the day. If it was returned before the due day or equal to the due day, we'll print zero. Else, we will print 15 by the return day minus due day. Because these conditional statements are nested, the condition here is going to hold for this entire nested block here. So we know that. For this section here, the return month and the due month are the same as are the return year and the due year are the same because it's in the same block. Sometimes these blocks can get really, really deep and that's not a really good way to keep track of your code. But for just year, month, and date, it's actually a pretty nice way to make sure that if we're in this section here, we know what's going on with the month and the year. So let's test our code. All right. Let's put this in parentheses. Okay, let's submit it and see how we did. Awesome, we passed all the test cases. Give me the thumbs up and subscribe to this page so you'll know when the next video comes out. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to solve other problems, please send me the URL in the comments below as well. Don't forget to fill out the survey to help give me feedback on this channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks and I'll see you later.